Hi everybody, Dan Bailey here. Welcome to episode 3 of my Fujifilm Retrospective series, where I'm looking back at my 10-year journey shooting with the Fujifilm X-Series cameras, and also celebrating Fujifilm's own 10-year anniversary of the Rex mount system. Before I get started, I just want to say a couple quick things. First of all, thanks so much to everybody who's been watching the series so far, and also leaving comments. It's great to hear similar stories from so many people around the world. Uh, it's almost like Fujifilm listened to photographers and gave us all exactly what we wanted. If you haven't left a comment, please let me know what your first Fuji was. And if you have left a comment already, no reason you can't leave another one and share even more details of your own X-Series life. Also, thanks very much to Patrick at Fuji Rumors, who shared this video series on his website last weekend. He also included a very thoughtful write-up. So I really appreciate his kind words. So if you're coming over from Fuji Rumors and that's where you saw this video for the first time, and hey, welcome to my channel. Stick around, there's a whole lot for you to see here. Finally, I'd just like to let you guys know about my Photography on the Brain video course. This is an exclusive video series where we dive deeply into some of the more cerebral aspects of photography and creativity, with the goal being to help you guys become more confident, more creative photographers. So if you want to check out the course here at this link, you can get a very special deal on the lessons for a limited time. Okay, let's get started. At the end of the last episode, I left you on a cliffhanger mentioning that I was in New York at the PhotoPlus trade show in the fall of 2013. And that's where I was introduced to a man named Yuji, who actually went on to become the general manager for the entire electronic imaging division at Fujifilm North America. And under his leadership, Fujifilm has grown tremendously in the past five years with the X-Series in the US market. But my story begins with Yuji about eight years ago. And when I met him, I told him how much I enjoyed shooting with the X-Series cameras at the time, it was the X10 and the X20 and the X-E1. And even though I was a Nikon shooter at the time, I told him, if you guys ever come out with like a rugged, fast action X-Series camera, I'd probably switch. And he looked at me and he said, well, we have something we think you're going to be really interested in. So shortly after the trade show, I had a video conference call with Yuji and also with the guy who was the director of marketing for Fujifilm North America. And they showed me what they had in the works, which actually was a fast action, high performance, weather sealed camera with an SLR style body. Within a couple weeks, they sent me a prototype. The body itself wasn't ready yet, so it was actually a different camera body, but it had the new firmware inside it, which included all the new features for the camera they were working on. So I shot with this thing for about three weeks, shooting all kinds of different subject matter, putting it through the tests, and also getting images for them to use for marketing when the new camera was finally announced. And I tried to capture scenes that I felt were indicative of the types of challenging situations that I felt would come in handy when using a camera like this. So at the end of the three weeks, I sent the camera back, and then one morning on January 28th, I woke up and saw the news. Fujifilm officially announced the X-T1. Designed as a premium quality interchangeable lens X-Series camera that was built for pro performance and to be able to withstand the elements, the X-T1 featured an SLR style body with 80 points of weather sealing, vastly increased high speed shooting performance, and a brand new hybrid autofocus system that used both contrast detect and phase detect pixels with 49 points spread across the frame and predictive algorithms that could track subjects at eight frames a second. In addition, the new EXR2 image processing technology inside the camera delivered incredible looking results with even better color fidelity and reproduction of the film simulations than in previous models. It also had a brand new viewfinder. I love that the X10 and 20 had an optical viewfinder but they were really tiny. And while I do like using the LCD screen for shooting sometimes, I much prefer to look through the viewfinder. It just gives me a much more intrinsic feel and experience when I'm photographing. When I'm shooting, you know, holding the camera out, looking at the LCD screen, I don't always feel 100% in control. It's almost like driving from the back seat. The brand new electronic viewfinder on the X-T1 offered a wonderfully immersive view and a huge image when you look through it. In fact, the image you would see when you look through the viewfinder was bigger than what you would see in any other camera on the market at that time, including the Nikon D800 and the Canon 5D Mark III. In addition, you could set up the X-T1 to show full shooting information inside the viewfinder, and it even had an auto-rotate feature, so when you turn the camera sideways, the electronic viewfinder would shift as well. The top deck on the X-T1 had three metal dials, one for ISO, one for shutter speed, and one for EV adjustments. And that put three of the most important parameters when you're photographing and adjusting your exposures right there at your fingertips. And it had six programmable function buttons to help increase your shooting efficiency. By comparison, the X-Pro1 had one function button. So with all that, the X-T1 was truly a groundbreaking camera, and not just for Fujifilm, but for the entire industry as well. 
In every regard, the X-T1 was an outdoor adventure photographer's dream camera, and it was the mirrorless camera that we were all waiting for. As a pro outdoor photographer, I drag my cameras through the dirt. I sometimes drop them, bang them on rocks. They get dirty, they get scratched, they get rained and snowed on, sometimes get frozen. I shove them into backpacks and panniers where they get carted up mountains and along dusty single track and long gravel roads. In addition, the types of subjects I like to photograph aren't standing still. They tend to move quickly and often very erratically. And I'm kind of erratic myself, and so I need a camera that matches my quick thinking, quick moving shooting style, which often happens in challenging and quickly changing light situations. What works for a lot of people doesn't necessarily work for me. And having done this for years, I know exactly what I want from a camera. And the X-T1 was it. So right after it was announced, I talked to somebody at Fujifilm and I had heard that there were only two X-T1s in the country at the time, and one of them I think was out at DP Review or something. I'd actually had a trip planned for Iceland later in the week, and so I sent Yuji a message and told him this. Well, two days later I got an email with tracking information, and on February 3rd, the FedEx man brought me this. When I pulled this thing out of the box, it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Just the form factor, the size, the styling with the metal dials, I mean, everything about it, the rubberized metal body, I mean, it was the thing of beauty and a little high performance machine at that. And it just so happened that it was so new, the manuals weren't even done yet. So inside the box, there was a stack of photocopies of, of the manual. And so this is, what, this is the only manual I've ever had for my X-T1. So I went off to Iceland with my new X-T1 and this stack of paper so I could figure out how to use all the features. They'd also sent me two new lenses, this 27 millimeter pancake and the 55 to 200, which was their first long range zoom lens. So between those two and the other two X series lenses I'd had at the time, the 18 to 55 and the 14 millimeter, I had a complete kit from wide to middle to long. And when I got there, I shot almost a thousand photos that week. I shot action, I shot landscapes, I shot adventure, I shot Northern Lights. In fact, I didn't even wait to get there to shoot photos. I shot photos of the plane out the window. I remember getting some really cool photos looking down as we flew over Greenland at sunset. I even shot a photo of my backpack underneath the seat using the X-T1's highest ISO setting, which was 51,200. And yeah, it was a little soft, a little noisy, but it was surprisingly good. It wasn't that bad. If you needed a photo shot in extremely low light, you could get it. I was actually traveling with another photographer that week, and she had these two Nikon D800s and big lenses. And she, poor woman, she was so burdened down, I felt so bad for her. Because here I was running around with this little guy. It was so liberating. It was like my brand new life had just begun. In addition, Yuji and the rest of the team at Fujifilm were developing the new X-Photographer program. And they brought me on as one of the very first US X-Photographers. And at that time, I was the only one who was an outdoor photographer. All the rest were portrait and wedding and street photographers. I continued to shoot with the X-T1 all throughout the winter and spring of 2014. You know, just being blown away by the camera's performance and falling in love with this immersive viewfinder whenever I look through the camera. My excitement only grew the more I used it because I continued to grow more familiar with all the features and capabilities that it had to offer. So in the next few months, I shot everything I could. Action, landscapes, portraits, uh, mountain aerials. And to this day, I can say that for all the cameras that I've shot in the past 10 years, many of my most favorite and iconic images were shots that I've made with the X-T1. I even took it on a 75 mile fat bike overnight trip where the temperatures got down to 20 below. You know, the official X-T1 manual says that the camera is built to withstand temperatures of 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, I live in Alaska where it gets to be colder than 14 degrees on a regular basis for much of the year. So I can attest that these things work in a lot colder temperatures than 14 degrees. And then in the springtime of 2014, something happened. In April, I had a week-long assignment with a new client. The job involved shooting for an international outdoor clothing retailer, similar to REI, but for Eastern Europe. And it involved shooting in a wide range of challenging locations, weather, and included things like fast action, outdoor portraits, lifestyle, kids, running, snowboarding, and shooting in extreme mountain conditions all of which pushed my own skills and the capabilities of my gear. Of course, I took the X-T1 with me, figuring I'd shoot with it alongside my Nikons as a second body. On the first day of the assignment, we all flew by helicopter up to this high mountain ridge. 
and this was April in Alaska, so it was still full on winter up there. And we were shooting mountain climbing situations. So for some of the scenes I was shooting on the ground, some of the scenes I was shooting while circling the mountain from a helicopter while these guys are climbing a small peak. And kind of near the end of the first day, we were shooting a situation where I was close with my wide angle lens shooting with the Nikon D700, and these guys are coming towards me. And in order to create even more excitement, we had the helicopter hovering just out of frame with its rotors blowing snow everywhere. So it looked like they were hiking up in a blizzard in extreme conditions. And it was while shooting that scene when my Nikon D700 failed for the first time ever. I'm thinking that with all the driving moisture and snow from the helicopter blades, uh, water somehow seeped in under the aperture ring, which is odd because that camera is supposed to be weather sealed. So without hesitation, I immediately pulled out my X-T1 and shot the whole rest of the assignment with it. Over a thousand frames in three and a half more days and numerous locations. It even got wet while shooting a pouring rain situation where we had piped in water from a hose and they were spraying it all over the subject matter and myself because I was shooting this scene with backlit flashes to get this really cool water effects. We did that scene for quite a long time and the camera just kept firing. I did my best to protect it from getting too drenched and I tried to dry it off between takes, uh, but it, it just kept going and it didn't fail. I shot looking through the viewfinder most of the time, but the tilt screen definitely came in handy for low angle shots because it's actually a very useful tool for shooting those kinds of vantage points. Now, over the course of the week, the X-T1 proved to be an incredibly high performing job saving companion. In addition, the art director and the production team were very impressed at how incredibly nimble I was with my small, light, fast camera setup. And this definitely helped keep things moving quickly in our very tight shooting schedule. In the end, they were happy with the images, they were happy with how adaptable I was to any kind of situation that came about. And to me, this reaffirmed the fact that the X-T1 and the amazing Fuji glass was more than capable of taking over and replacing my Nikons and allowing me to go all in with Fuji, just like I told Yuji I would if. So after the assignment, I sent my D700 in for a pair, and when it came back, I stuck it on the shelf where it sat unused for a year. For whatever reason though, I wasn't quite ready to sell it at the time, probably because there were a lot of memories attached to my Nikons. I still have nothing but fondness and admiration for Nikon and for the experiences I've had with those cameras over the years. I mean, they were good to me. Not only were they a client of mine, in 1993, I did a workshop trip in northern Nepal with Galen Rowell, who was my biggest inspiration as an outdoor photographer. Well, two weeks before the trip, someone broke into the house I was living in and stole all my cameras and my bike. So in my frantic desperation, I called Galen's office, told him what happened, called Nikon, told them, and a man named Richard Lopinto, who was Nikon's marketing manager for quite a long time, worked out a deal with Galen where they would loan me gear through his NPS account. And that's a gesture that I'll never forget, because that trip to Nepal with Galen was the true beginning of my life as an adventure photographer. It was even before I turned pro, but that was the big seed that started it all. Well, in April of 2015, a year after that fateful assignment when my Nikon failed, I finally put my money where my mouth was. I packed up all my Nikon DSLR gear, though I kept all the flashes, and I took it down to my local camera shop where I traded it all in for a second X-T1 body and two Fuji lenses, the outstanding 23mm 1.4 and the 50 to 140. And the first thing I did was I went back to my car and I pulled out my phone and I texted Yuji and I told him what I did. So I've mentioned Yuji a few times in the past two episodes. He's been such an integral part of my X-Series life and also, as I said, steering the direction of Fujifilm North America during the past five years or so. To this day, I continue to enjoy my friendship with Yuji, and I keep in touch with him on a regular basis. The last time I saw him was Photo Plus Fall 2019, and then the pandemic hit, and there were no in-person events for two years. And now he's back in Japan. He was recently promoted to become the Director of Business and Product Development for the Electronic Imaging Division at the Fujifilm Mothership in Tokyo. That's a really big deal. So I'd like to dedicate this episode to Yuji because of the enormous impact that he's made on my photography life during the past eight years and because I know he'll watch this. In fact, it's all the more reason for you guys to leave comments because as someone who plays an important role in the company and as a passionate photographer himself, he loves to hear stories from people about their experiences with the Fujifilm cameras. So I'm going to say this directly to you, Yuji. I know I've said it before, but I can never thank you enough for the incredible amount of support that you've shown me over the years. And it's been the absolute highlight of my photography career to be associated with Fujifilm and work with you guys as an ambassador in this capacity. So I wish you well, and I hope to see you again soon, my friend. The X-T1 represents a momentous chapter in my Fujifilm story, and it set the tone for everything that came after it, not just with Fuji cameras, but in the entire photo industry as well. 
The story's not over yet. There's more to come. Stay tuned for the next episode. In the meantime, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, leave a comment, as I said. If you're new here, please go visit my website and blog as well. I've got a ton of Fuji-related information on there. And if you're an X-Series shooter, you'll definitely want to check out my best-selling ebook, X-Series Unlimited. This is a 400-page guidebook that shows you everything you need to know in order to have the most fun and get the best performance from your Fuji camera. I want to thank you so much for watching this episode. In the meantime, stay tuned for the next one and have fun with your Fuji out there.